multi-talented star Lillian Garcia recently brought her successful podcast Chasing Glory with Lillian Garcia to the free side of WWE Network. Thank you so much, Lillian. How has the podcast grown since its inception? Wow. Well, thank you, first of all, for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. So good to talk to you again. And to, you know, all your fans. It's been amazing. It's, it's been an incredible ride. I can't believe it's already been four years since I started it. And it just goes to show you what fans can do because it's got over 7 million downloads. And also the guests that have been on, how open, vulnerable they've been just in hopes of, you know, sharing their story and that their story will help somebody out there that's listening to it. And that's what the show's all about. It's just being, being very real and raw, and it ends up being very inspiring. And people have gravitated to it, especially in this day and age where, you know, mental health is at the forefront of all of us needing to talk about our own struggles and what we go through and how to hang on. And it's just been a blessing now to have it on the network where it's going to be seen by more people. Do you see yourself as growing as an interviewer, a conversationalist because of this? It's wild. It's, it's something that I didn't see. I didn't know that this was going to happen, but the superstars or my guests, whoever they are, feel comfortable talking to me. And I really loved it. I have loved really getting to know people's stories and journeys. Everyone has such a unique story and a unique journey. And the way I've approached this with zero judgment because I have my own struggles that I've gone through and I share those on the show. And I think it's just been a beautiful thing to have that now uh, where it's, it's something else that I very much enjoy doing that just adds to what I've been doing in my career. Has COVID accelerated the show? Not so much changed the show, just but added another dimension to the show. Well, it's funny you should say COVID because during the pandemic, you know, we were running shows and then uh, the Black Lives Matter movement started and I went ahead and did a show uh, with some African Americans on the show and we really got into a deep conversation about it. And then it just seemed that there was so much, uh, I should say, chaos in the world, like a lot of just anxiety. And, and I was even feeling like, oh my gosh, I need to just step back for my own mental health and and listen more and take a break. So I took the summer off. Uh, we ended up moving. My husband and I realized we wanted to be closer to the beach for our own sanity. It was better. So we made the move. So we moved studios uh, as well. And so that, that kind of allowed the show just to take a pause for a moment. And at first I was worried. I was like, this is maybe not the right time to do that. And, um, and then I realized I got to listen to my gut. And I'm so glad I did. Because it, it now gave an opportunity to come back, you know, on the, uh, on the new season premiere and launch, you know, on the network. Uh, so it was like the right fit at the right time. And I also think that the, the superstars, they were even asking me, hey, whenever you come back, I, I really am ready to share my story. And so it's been a great thing to take a, a pause where people, then the fans as well, have been like, oh, I can't wait for the show to come back. It really does help me. It starts my week off right. So it's, it's been a, a great choice and now a great launch. Is being on the WWE Network, what is that like? I know it's very new. It just started now. Was this something where when you're on the network, you're saying, look, this is great. Let's do this. But I've got to keep it to what I've been doing. I've got to keep it to what I'm comfortable with. So they are the first ones that told me that. They said, we don't want to produce this. We want you to still produce this with your Chase and Glory team and keep it the same. We just want to air it. You know, the video side is going to be on the network. The audio side is still wherever you get your podcast. But this is still 100% produced by Chase and Glory. And I love that concept because I didn't want it, you know, to change the show in any way. And like I said, there were the first ones that said, no, we love what you're doing, and we, we really are want to keep doing it this way. About Chasing Glory, it's very cool. Everyone has a unique story and a different definition of what success looks like. And I'm reading this now because it's a very 
just thought-provoking and inspiring. On Chasing Glory with Lillian Garcia, which was conceived in 2016, the mission is to connect the guest with the viewers and listeners to humanize success, persevere through hardships, which a lot of us have been going through, especially this past year, embrace diversity, and empower their own journey to glory. I'm curious, Lillian, what is your journey to glory? You know, that keeps evolving every day. It's wild. I really thought that my, even in my life, I really just thought that I was going to be a singer and that was, that was it. That was the goal. And it, it has really evolved to so much more. And I think the biggest lesson I want to leave with people with that is, you know, when I took the advice of my agent who said, hey, there's an audition for the WWF, and at first I wasn't even going to do it. And then he said, look, just go, you never know. And it was a great, you know, piece of advice that I took, and I want to leave that for people out there too. You might have a vision that a certain way that you think your life is supposed to look like, but if you're just open to the possibilities, it can be so much better. And that's what's happened. And even now transitioning from ring announcer WWE to then transition to ring announcer or cage announcer, they call it in MMA, uh, and, and break some barriers there, to then evolving the show to where it's been. The case for glory is unreal. And yeah, it's full of challenges, but that's life. And if the more we can all talk about those challenges, the more we can help each other out, then no one out there should feel alone in their journey. Well, Lillian, that agent earned his 10%. Oh, <laughs> oh don't worry, he did. <laughs> I'm just with that move alone. <laughs> <laughs> the agents are there for <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, who are some of the guests that you've already chatted with and had a conversation with that come to mind when I ask you that? You know, it's wild because I there's not anyone in particular that was my favorite or anything like that. I never rate any kind of uh, guest. Uh, I, I think it's so special to hear everyone's you know, different journeys, but there are a few that come to mind that I didn't know the what they had gone through in their life. You know, I didn't know what Mickey James had gone through in her life. I didn't know what Paige had gone through in her life. I didn't, I didn't even know what Braun Strowman, my, my guest, you know, that launched this week, I wasn't aware of everything that he's gone through in his life and all the deaths that he has experienced in his family uh, and all the, the, even just like his mom, you know, being hit by the trophy in her neck when he was one years old and it caused her you know, to be disabled to this day. And uh, I mean, just these trials and tribulations that people really go through and then they get through it and then become these superstars and, but yet still have to, you know, go through their own challenges even while he's a superstar. And he shares so much in this episode. And like you said, he said mental health should be talked about more. And that's why he's willing to go ahead and say, look, you see me at this really tall six eight you know, over 300 pounds, and you think I've got it all together, but no, I've got my own challenges. And when people humanize themselves like that, I, I feel like pe more people connect. And I think a, a lot of people have really connected with Braun even more after this. Jason Glory with the Lillian Garcia debuted on WWE Network. It's on Mondays. And as she said, Braun Strowman, we know is the monster, but this is a different side. You're getting a different look, a perspective on these WWE superstars and these people and just bring in some reality, some true life, some hardships, ups and downs, the roller coaster. It's really interesting. I'm curious, was Braun someone that you wanted for the first episode? Was it someone WWE suggested? How did that transpire? No, I watched his uh, Chronicle. And when I see, uh, saw the Chronicle on the network, I was like, wow, I worked with him for so many years and didn't know all of this. And I was like, I, I want to dive in deeper. I've got to know more because this is so intriguing. Like, to be the monster among men and such a strong character and such a strong man and then have all of this that he had to endure in his life. And so when the network approached me, and I had asked Braun to be a sh uh, on the show a few years back. Uh, and then to, to have the network say, hey, we want to do this, and I was like, 
oh my God, guys, I know who I want my first guest. Like, I just watched The Chronicle. It really lines up with what Chasing Glory is all about. You know, is it okay if I have him? And they're like, yeah, we would love that. So uh, they made it happen. Lillian Garcia is a history maker and barrier breaker. The Spanish beauty has solidified her name into the sports, entertainment, wellness, and mainstream media. Singer, songwriter, television personality, producer, ring announcer, WWE, ring announcer, professional fighting leagues, actually cage announcer, professional fighters league. Setting first in those realms, it's just a testament and an inspiration to see how Lillian Garcia has conducted herself. I've yet to read or hear anything negative about Lillian Garcia. When she meets people, she's genuine and a nice person, and it's great to see success for people like that. Lillian, how did the podcast land on WW Network? First of all, I want to say thank you for what you just said. Uh, that's not lost on me, and I just really appreciate it. Uh, those words make me well up, seriously, uh, because I, I've just wanted just to be a vehicle for good in this world. And, you know, it was the perfect timing of when I told you we took the break, we were wondering, okay, trying to figure out when do we come back? Do we come back in September, or should we just wait in August? I mean, October. And then I got an email from the WWE uh, who said, look, you know we love your show. Uh, there's a, a Look, this is WWE supported this from day one. They allow me to interview the current roster of the WWE, and, and then they help promote it as well. They would tweet out whenever I had their guests on. So they've really been a, a fan from the very beginning, a supporter. And so they, they said, we would love to have this on the WWE Network now that you are back on video and I was like, man, this just seems a, a, really a perfect com, you know, combination of, of us colliding again and coming together and in a way of me coming home, which has been great. I know it's only been a couple of days. Has there been reactions so far with the Braun Strowman conversation? Amazing reaction. Uh, the fans have just been incredible, like, wow, I didn't know this. Uh, and a lot of them didn't even watch the Chronicle yet. So they didn't know some of the things that we dive in deeper on Chasing Glory. So, again, they were like, God, he just appears so strong. Like, thank you for humanizing him and for letting us all know that we do go through hard times, but you can get through it if we all work together, right, and help each other out. And so it's been incredible, but not only just the fans, the media. This interview is getting picked up all over the place. And a lot of the things that he says, it's the first time people are hearing it, uh, especially he reveals some things that he's never talked about anywhere else. Because I provide a platform, like I said, no judgment, but more than anything, I'm not out there to exploit their stories. Uh, this isn't clickbait. This isn't any of that. This is a genuine safe place where we can all just have a conversation about some of the things that we've endured and help each other out. I hope I have this correct. I think I recall... MVP on the show? Yes. Good. <laughs> Miami Zone, what an inspiring story for that man. I'm curious, though, how did he do on the speed, not speed round? <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks for bringing that up. If you guys don't know, anybody who's listening to this, we do have what's called the speed, not speed round. We put those up later on in the week on YouTube, youtube.com slash Lillian Garcia. And they're fun, like five, ten minute segments where I just do these rapid fire, hot seat questions, and MVP nailed it. We had so much fun. He gave some answers that I had no idea. Uh, I didn't know that he really wants to do another, like an album and be with a band. And there, You're going to find out things about MVP in such a fun way that you didn't know about. Do you have any upcoming guests that you can share? Well, every Friday we reveal who the next guest for Monday is going to be. We do that on uh, at Chasing Glory on Instagram. It's called Glory Friday. And so I, I don't want to give it away. I would, would love people just to tune in uh, Friday morning. It will get announced who Mondays will be, but you will not want to miss out who Mondays is. Well, that's good. No spoiler alerts, Lillian. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't apologize. I'm glad. <laughs> I don't like spoilers. <laughs> I like there to be surprised. 
I would like to ask though, who would, if there's a bucket list of who you'd like to have on, anyone come to mind? Well, you know, I, I'm just so intrigued with everyone's story and I have such a long list of people, you know, that I, I'm very excited to get. But like I said, I don't like to put one over the other because I'm always intrigued by everybody's story. Uh, but I mean, if, if things that come to mind, of course I would love to have The Rock on. He and I did, you know, a lot of backstage interviews together. It'd be just really great to reminisce and talk about those moments and his amazing journey and how he just keeps exploding with more and more every single year. And how the heck he does it in 24 hours, you know, the same 24 hours that all of us have. Um, I would love to go in depth with his story. Roman Reigns, Ronda Rousey, but like even I've mentioned Pat Benatar. We'd love to have her on. She really influenced the way that I sing. Uh, there's, there's just so many that that's what makes it so exciting. Just uh, who's going to be next? I think there's three rocks, by the way. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I think you're right. There's nobody. I, it's amazing to me that he can do so much and and just conquer the world. That's his quest. I'm going to mention a couple of names to you because you mentioned The Rock, and yeah. I think Danny Garcia, who's part of Seven yeah. Bucks Production, now the XFL. I think yep. that would be awesome. And another one locally who's international is Gloria Estefan. Absolutely. Because Gloria is another one that really just touched me. When she came on the scene, I was like, whoa, oh my God, I love her voice. Who is this? And then she was doing the whole Miami Sound Machine and all. And as a Latina, it meant so much to me uh, that we, you know, we're getting that, you know, on the main street, uh, mainstream uh, media and, and the, the foreground of music there. So, uh, I would love to have her on. Uh, and it, it is, like I said, it could be endless. And Danny, I've already even pitched that. I would love to have Danny Garcia on. She was just so much fun to talk to all the time at Ringside. Smart business woman. She oh. was very successful. It's someone you say, oh, they're with this person, that person. Oh, my God, no. She really has made a niche for herself. That's why I brought her up as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so when you were growing up, I have to get to this. You were involved. Your father was involved in the embassy, the American embassy in Spain, and you traveled a lot. And I'm curious, did you ever have a bug to get involved in working for the embassy and politics or anything like that? Funny you should say that. The answer quickly, no. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad was a lieutenant colonel, uh, which then he was stationed in Madrid, worked for the U.S. Embassy, uh, and it was, I loved growing up there. Uh, it was great experience. We had to leave, I remember it's like every six months or so, uh, we had to leave for the whole visa thing, and uh, we, my parents would be like, okay, this weekend we're going to Italy. Uh, this weekend we're going to Germany. I'm like, oh my God, that was my childhood. It was just insane. And I'm just so grateful that I had that because I got to experience so many different cultures from, you know, early on, which for me, when I got the job at WWE and they were like, well, it's going to involve a lot of travel and a lot of international. I was like, sign me up. I was ready. I feel like I was prepped for it. Uh, so yeah, I think that definitely entertainment was just always in my blood from when I was five years old. That's when I discovered singing and singing on stage, and I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. And even in college, I studied filmmaking, producing, and directing, and I never knew it was going to help me so much now with a podcast because I did a lot of editing on my own and a lot of the, you know, the production aspects. Um, so I'm able to set up camera angles and... I, you know, I'd, I'd push the button on and then I'd or run over to the seat and then I'd start the show. So <laughs> it was, that was just always my thing. I've, I've, I don't mind watching politics, but I've never wanted to be involved in it. Uh, and, or the military, I, I, I don't know, just entertainment was in it, was just in my blood. Cage announcer for the Professional Fighters League and you set barriers there. Also, PFL took a year off because of COVID. Not yeah. many sports did that. Yes, there were some breaks. Yes, bubbles, trying to be safe. But PFL said, hey, 
very serious. Not to say the others didn't think it's serious, because they know it's serious to the other sports leagues. But they decided we're going to take Tim off. We're going to focus on brand content. And you've been able to host a show or two for Professional Fighters League on their YouTube channel and other outlets. What has working for PFL been like as a cage announcer? A first for women, I believe. And also hosting shows like that. It's been really amazing. Especially because that organization, is they embraced me. Like from day one, they helped me. Uh, you know, help groom me because it was a transition. It's not the same being a ring announcer at WWE and a cage announcer at MMA. Uh, I was terrified. I was terrified that maybe the fans wouldn't accept me, but they did. So the fans have been great. And then this year when they took off, you know, I was able to do Prep Point, which is a show that I pitched to uh, get some insight as to who these new fighters that are going to be stepping into the cage in 2021, who they are, some of their background stories. So that people could care about who is it that's going to be in the cage and know a little bit more about them. So Prep Point was something we launched. I did voiceover work for a show called a Fantastic Finishes, which uh, both of those aired on ESPN. And then I understand why they took the, you know, they had to go ahead and just cancel the season because it's so different. The regular season, the playoffs, and the championship. A lot of the fighters are coming from overseas. So with the quarantine and, you know, the travel from, let's say, Russia or Dagestan, it's just pretty much impossible to run what they have been doing with this new perspective of UFC fight, I mean, not UFC, but MMA fighters. Uh, and, you know, UFC has an, its own island, which is so awesome. <laughs> but PFL, you know, had to look at that and be like, okay, we, we, we really can't run this the way we really want to run it. So let's just forego this season, do all of these shows, and then let's just come back strong in 2021, which is has been announced. I'll be back in the cage starting in April. I should have done more homework on Lillian Garcia, but I'm going to ask, and I'm not shy of saying I don't know. Kayla Harrison, American Top Team, PFL champion. Have you interviewed her? I have not gotten her on Chasing Glory. We were trying to get it um, last season because I had John Doomsday Howard, I had uh, Lance Palmer, Chris Wade, I had Randy Couture on, Sean O'Connell, uh, Caroline Pierce. So I did really try to highlight some people from the PFL, but her schedule was just so insane. And I really try to do in-person interviews. And it didn't work for this season, but I, was, I definitely said... In, and I had a conversation with her. Uh, okay, we got to get you on. We, you know, when the season launches again. So that's definitely on the uh, on the bucket list too. Amazing talent, two-time Olympic judo gold medalist, first-time USA man or woman, and that just incredible talent and someone just to keep an eye on in the MMA world. All right, I don't have speed, not speed round. But I'm going to try to get through these so you can so you can get out of here, Lily. And I appreciate the time. So we'll try to go through this quickly. How is California living compared to South Carolina living? <laughs> well, I don't want anybody in South Carolina not to like me or anything. Because it really did serve a purpose when I was growing up. But California and the sun and the beach, whoa, that is right now feeding my soul. USC or USC then? The real USC. Like, come on, we were first. University <laughs> of South Carolina, Gamecocks all the way. Go Cox! Yes! <laughs> That's the bumper sticker. Don't get me wrong now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Acting. Is that something you're interested in? And if so, can The Rock help with that? Okay, you have to ask that again because I didn't hear you. Acting. Is that something you're interested in? And if so, can The Rock help with that? Okay, uh, I love acting. Been uh, acting since I was a little girl. Absolutely love it. And of course, The Rock, if he wants to help that along, I welcome it. Coolest places you've sang the national anthem? Well, I don't know if cool is, uh, you know, the, the, the term to use with this, but the most special, obviously, was after 9-11. And then to then be able to do it in Iraq and Afghanistan with all the soldiers around was 
unbelievable and uh, it's just something I will never forget. And those were WWE events, correct? Yes. Yeah, always a tribute to the troops and even WrestleManias. You, you sang at WrestleMania too, correct? Yeah, I hold a record. I It's so wild. I had three, uh, surpassed Aretha Franklin after I did my third, and then the bump uh, asked me to do it on their show right before Mania so that it would uh, be the opening to Mania. So it was pretty wild. I did it from my living room. So yeah, I, I did the virtual thing this year. Oh, that's something. That's so awesome. Steve Spurrier. I love him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Was... Like him, Lou Holt. Oh my God. Amazing coaches. The price is right. Ah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> now, Lillian, was it Drew Carey or Bob Barker when you were on? It was Drew Carey. Ah, WWE Hall of Famer, WWE Hall of Famer, Drew Carey. Did you get to share any WWE uh, moments or talk with him at all? So brief, like after the whole thing was done, I was like, dude, I can't believe this. Like, you know, WWE, you were doing a thing. I, I worked with them. He's like, wait, what? He's like, what a small world. <laughs> so it was pretty fun. But I, it was like two seconds because he was going from one show to another. Lillian, were you there when Bob Barker was the host of yeah. WWE and berated Chris Jericho? <laughs> Hilarious. Ringside, and I was laughing the whole time. Who did you do? What, well, you won prizes on the prices, right? You were representing the University of South Carolina. They were doing a college team event, correct? Yes. And you won actually a big trip, am I right? Did you go to, was it London? So I won the trip to London, but then there was the bombing that, went, that happened in London. So they switched it, and uh, I ended up going to Australia of all things. Oh. Oh, we fighted. Whoa, land down under, kangaroos, that whole Outback Jack, just whole, yes. what an experience there. Did you go on one of those, uh, I guess I'm sure it's not safari there, but a safari type tour while you were in Australia? Yeah, I, uh, I'm trying to think if I went, because I've gone a couple times to, or a few times to Australia, so I can't remember which trip, but I, I know that I took in the koalas. I, oh, yes, I did do the whole giraffe and it's just amazing, Australia. I even, uh, I, I took, uh, we went ahead and extended it and went to New Zealand as well. Did some bungee jumping, which I'd never done. Cave diving. So it was incredible trip. Did you see Tony Gurria or the Bushwhackers while you were there? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my God, the Bushwhackers. I remember them. I did a backstage interview with them. And oh my God, they just spit all over me. It was yeah, I was going to ask them. Good, I'm glad you mentioned that. I was going to say that they lick you. And by the way, for those that don't know, that's what they do. It's a nice thing. Yeah, yeah it's a nice thing. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up because we're, we're getting a, a, almost the, to the 30-minute mark, and I wanted to try to keep it at 2025. So let's wrap it up. I, I, I'll let you have the last word before you do that so you could talk about where people can watch Chase and Glory with Lillian Garcia video and audio, and anything else you want to share that you're doing. But I have to ask this too. Lillian, have you ever thought about, or did you ever try out for American Idol, The Voice, or The Masked Singer? So if I, I didn't, I've never tried out for American Idol. I did try out for The Voice, and it was very surreal. And I realized the importance of the song. And I didn't really know that. Like they kept saying, it's so important. It's so important to choose the right song. And I realized that I chose a song that had been sung to death. And that is the worst thing that you could do for judges. So anybody out there that's getting ready to try out for any of these shows, make sure you don't get a song that's just sung by everyone. I've chosen Adele song. Uh, so yeah, it was a it was a surreal experience, but hey, I, I had to give it a shot. That's awesome. And maybe you could do your own chasing glory. You could do your own singing show, right? And then have others come in and have WWE superstars and wrestlers and then fans. Oh my God, that would be so great. <laughs> we want to end up doing like a live tour of Chasing Glory. That would be so incredible. Once we're allowed, you know. to be with fans again i miss the fans so much so yeah you say you want to wrap it up i just want to say to the fans like thank you guys like i totally miss you you are the reason that this is successful you're the reason that 
you've even helped me along with even my own career, especially that girl that started August 23rd of 99 that was terrified, didn't know what she was doing at all with zero training. And you just embraced me and gave me a shot. And now even in MMA as well. And I just really want to appreciate uh, everybody out there with for the love and the support. And just know that this show is my labor of love to try to help you through all of these stories that the superstars and the guests are sharing. Uh, you can find Chasing Glory at Chasing Glory on Instagram, also ChasingGlory.com. You can definitely find it wherever you get your podcast, including the Chasing Glory app. And then more importantly, you can watch the show now, the free version of the WWE Network. So you have nothing to lose. It's absolutely free. You can check it out for yourself. Uh, definitely spread it. You know, tell people about it. And then myself, to follow me at Lillian Garcia on Instagram and Twitter, Lillian Garcia official fan page on Facebook, and LillianGarcia.com. Jeez. That's a lot of places you can find us. <laughs> and all well worth it. And you're amazing. And thank you so much, Lillian Garcia. I appreciate you so much. More than you know, Jim. Thank you.